What's up everybody, I'm John from A Guy In His Games. Today we're talking about the Resident Evil movie reboot. So, the whole taking Resident Evil back to its roots, you know, the first game, things like that. Um, all that's back on the table. James Wan's not involved anymore as far as I know. And there's this new director. Now, I didn't think James Wan was, I don't know, like the, the best choice to start off with anyway. Um, but he would have, I think he would have done a better job than, than this guy's going to do. Saying that, I don't really think any of these directors that have been eyed up are going to do a good job with it. Um... The first film has so many flaws, it's it's not really a patch on the on the source material, but I enjoy it for what it is, I'm not going to lie. Um, does that mean that it ruins the experience in terms of the games for me? No, because I treat them completely separate. After the first film, every other film was utter shit. It was complete fucking trash. And, um, you know, James Wan, he has some, some kind of... Some roots in horror, you know, he created the first Saw film. I could see with a Resident Evil reboot, him handling the traps and stuff of the Spencer Mansion quite well, and probably the gore aspect, stuff like that. And, you know, it's not hard to, to create some zombies and throw in a few, like, creatures from the game. The spiders, the hunters, uh, the chimera. So it might have worked, you know, it might have worked to some capacity. So he bypassed Resident Evil, he went on to direct Aquaman, which, you know, from his point of view, you can understand, bigger property, more money, etc, etc, big budget film. Um, and now he's producing the new Mortal Kombat reboot. So instead, in the directing chair, we have Johans Roberts. Reading up about him, he directed 47 Meters Down, a film I haven't actually seen. I'm not familiar with any of Johans Roberts' works. And that's why I'm a little bit on the fence. I say a little bit, I mean I'm very on the fence when it comes to this reboot. Look, the, the last lot of films were terrible. Like I said, I might like the first film for what it is but it is a straight 7 out of 10 experience as a resident evil film based on a series that i absolutely fucking love to death like passionately it didn't it didn't hit the, the right marks it really didn't that like i said there was a few things that made me go i love that the liquor um the zombies are okay the fact that they're in this kind of underground facility that was all cool everything looked very umbrella you know at certain points but there was so much source material to borrow from. There was no gothic architecture in the film. There was no grit to the film. That's one thing. It wasn't gritty enough. And Resident Evil, the first game, was horror. It was pure, unadulterated horror. Um, playing it when I was 13, it scared the shit out of me. And I fell in love with the series. In fact, Resident Evil made me fall in love with zombies. I didn't I didn't like zombies before that. But when, when I played that game and I saw the zombies... That was it. Like, I became a zombie fan. Because of the impact that Resident Evil had on me and the fact that it made zombies cool in my eyes before I used to think they were a bit crappy, a bit cheesy, I was able to, you know, to, to see films like Dawn of the Dead, the remake, Shaun of the Dead, 20 Days Later, Quarantine, the list goes on. All these amazing zombie films I probably would have missed out on because I wasn't a fan of zombies before, you know, Resident Evil. Um, so yeah, you owe this game a lot of respect when it comes to, you know, production companies, studios, and the director. And I don't know if, if these people, especially after the last lot of films, understand how iconic and, and special this, this first game is to, to people like me and a lot of other fans. Johans Roberts goes on to say, We are in active development of that at the moment. I pitched them a take and they really loved it. So we are just gearing up on that as we speak. Really, I'm in the office all the time there. So yeah, it's great. It's going to be super scary. It's super, super scary. And it's just getting back to the roots of the game. I think at the moment, I'm not really allowed to say much more than that. But it's going to be a lot of fun. That's great. But actions speak louder than words. You know, if I remember correctly, Paul, Paul W. Sanderson was like, I'm making Resident Evil Zero. I'm making the, the story that happens before the first game. And... When I watch that film, it's completely separate from, from the game lore, you know. It doesn't feel like a prequel to the games in any way, shape or form. And we do have a Resident Evil Zero anyway, you know. So, we have an actual prequel game. Um, like I said, it's words, you know. Everybody can say this is going to be the most amazing thing since, since sliced bread. Doesn't make it true. Doesn't mean they're going to actually fulfill that promise or the original concept and idea. You know, things do change when it comes to actually directing the film and, and creating it. Now, one thing I'd like to point out is I love the original Resident Evil trilogy. The original PS1 trilogy, the remake of the first game, the, the second game's remake, love them all. Like, that's how I want them to, to create a film based on Resident Evil. Um, but I also like 4, I like 5, and I like 7 for different reasons. I like Revelations 1, you know, for different reasons. Because 
As singular experiences, they're fun. They're fun games. 4 is an extremely fun game, but when I first played that game on GameCube after the remake of the first game, which was phenomenal, and the, you know, the, the prequel Zero, I was such a pure Resident Evil fan that when I played this game, I was like, what is this? This isn't Resident Evil. This is so far removed from what Resident Evil is that I just didn't, didn't like it the first time around. As I played through it more and more, it got its claws into me. It's a bit like the Metal Gear series, you know, those series of games. Um, there's so many games in that series where I've been a bit on the fence about. Uh, Metal Gear Solid 3, Metal Gear Solid 4, uh, Peace Walker. There's so many games where I've had to replay them over and over again that aren't Metal Gear and Metal Gear 2. I mean Metal Gear Solid 1 and 2. Um, in order to, to like them, especially 3, Snake Eater, I've had to replay through that game and, and understand what everybody else sees. And I finally got it. It's like the film Blade Runner. Didn't like that film. I've watched that film a total of, what, seven, ten time, t seven to ten times. The first time I watched it, did not fucking understand. I was bored. It's around the sixth and seventh times that I watched that film where I started to understand why people liked it so much and why it was such a good film. Now, that's not to say, as an individual, I like things just because people like them or I follow the trend. I don't. Um, I don't like the Final Fantasy series. And I don't like Star Wars or Lord of the Rings. Um... But there you go, we're all different. I'm one of those people that likes Aliens and Alien and Alien 3 and Prometheus even. Uh, so yeah, it's the same thing with Resident Evil. There's so many different types of games out there and the way that it changed up the the lore and just the, the mechanics and everything and the whole survival horror thing. Um, that yeah, I'm still a fan of the originals. Like I prefer those. I prefer the remake of the first game over everything else. Uh, but at the same time, I do like the, the remake of Resident Evil 2. I do like RE4. I like 5 in some bits and um and i'm a fan of re7 as well i think that's a good game and i like revelations as well which leads me back to the film when it comes to producing a, a movie equivalent of the games and using the source material i think that he should look at the game take bits from the game and also look at the novel by sd perry the 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 novel of the first game it's very well done the way it condenses the game's story and certain areas that you you get to visit in the game in the first game it does very well in telling the the same story but in in its own way by all means use all of that stuff try and make a an hour and, and a half movie you know horror film because you're gonna need to make it quite long and um it's gonna have to have a lot of structure you're gonna have to pick bits and take pieces from the game the first game and, and try and rearrange it it's gonna be like a collage so or a puzzle um but it's a monumental task like with mortal kombat i don't see that being such a monumental task in in adapting it to the screen it's already kind of been done before and it's a fighting game if you go back to the original games the story was very bare bones so it's easier to adapt but when it comes to to the re to the resident evil series or at least the first game and adapting that as a film it it's going to be quite hard i think that's why paul ws anderson he went the other way and just did whatever he wanted to do um but it can be done. If you make the film like an hour and a bit and you structure it cleverly, you know, use certain rooms, puzzles, traps, enemies, take certain plot points and you do it in, in the proper way, then he'll be able to pull it off. But it does have to be over like 90 minutes long. That's, that's what I'm thinking. And I'm not one of these people that doesn't understand the process of making a film. I understand it's hard, grueling, and everybody gets fed up in the end. It takes its toll on everybody. Same as making video games and, and music and all the rest of it. But if you're going to take on the task of adapting Resident Evil, the first game, just know there's a lot of fans out there that grew up with this series. Um, if we look at the backlash from the Sonic trailer, it's understandable people were pissed, you know? It doesn't matter how many times they change Sonic, that film still looks crap. It still looks like it's subpar. Um, so when you take something like Resident Evil and you're taking on this task, just know that you're going to get some backlash if it isn't living up to fans' standards. Or expectations, and we have every right to critique something if it isn't living up to those standards. At the end of the day, we're the ones going to see this film, we're the ones that grew up with this series, with the first game, and that's the audience, that's the target audience you're going for. Um, also horror fans, you know, there'll be zombie fans and horror fans that will want to go and see it, but... If you're trying to attract the people that were fans of the old films and trying to bring them back, I don't think that's going to work. I really don't. You're going to have a, a Call of Duty Fortnite style crowd. People that jump on something's dick when it's popular and in the, the spotlight and then once it's not, they hop straight off. Um, Resident Evil 6 is testament to that and Resident Evil 5. Because they were like more action orientated, it brought in a, a bigger crowd. People who hadn't necessarily played the, the older games, hadn't grown up with this series. It drew them in and then... You know, when they got bored of it, when it wasn't popular anymore, they jumped straight off of it. They jumped ship. Um, and then Capcom were left with just the original fans. And some of the original fans had 
had left that series long ago. After Resident Evil 6, I didn't want to know about Resident Evil. It's not until RE7 changed things up, brought it back to survival horror, and, you know, the remake of 2 was so good that it kind of drew the fans back in. You know, the original fans or the ones that had still stayed with it. Um, it gave us some, it gave us some hope for the for the rest of the series. Having said that, the days of Resident Evil 2 and 3, the PlayStation trilogy, Code Veronica, the remake of the first one, um, those days are long gone. And even though I like the remake of 2, I like 7, I like 4, it doesn't measure up to when I was growing up with this series and it was still in its infancy and it was growing as well, you know, and becoming more and more popular. When something's more under the radar, it's more of a cult hit, underground, whatever you want to call it, and then it blows up and it has to attract more people outside its core fan base. That's when the, the waters begin to muddy a little bit and that's what happened with with Metal Gear Solid and Resident Evil, in my personal opinion. The days of waiting for the next PlayStation title to come out and what we felt at that time, the way we were growing with this series, those days are long gone, they're not coming back. But if this guy can do a good job with this film, if the production company can, can see his vision, he's got the right vision, then maybe we could, we could get some sort of nostalgia or feeling that we had when we were playing those those playstation classics you know back in 1998 or you know 2000 whether you want to admit it or not resident evil became a pop culture phenomenon it really did um bands like gorillas they take this for instance there's a video uh based on one of their songs called clint eastwood and 2d the main singer he has a shirt that says t-virus um shawn of the dead wouldn't have been a thing if it wasn't for resident evil because there was a series before shawn of the dead was even conceived called spaced and in one of the episodes, Simon Pegg's character, he, he's playing Resident Evil 2 and he has this dream of just shooting zombies and stuff, you know. And um, and then Shaun of the Dead was, was born from that. And so Resident Evil actually birthed Shaun of the Dead. Now there's tons of other like references to, to the games and to Resident Evil as a series um, throughout sort of like history, or at least throughout the years, you know, since Resident Evil came out. And uh, yeah, it became a pop culture phenomenon. It really did. We had books, we had comic books, we had action figures, we had all kinds of stuff uh, referencing, you know, the games and stuff. If you think that a studio can survive on just the games itself, especially at that point, uh, that they were making, you know, a certain amount of money. But if you can bring in more money and it's not really selling out to an extent, because I back in the day I never thought Resident Evil was particularly selling out, you know, in the way that some other things do. Um, it has since sold out a little bit, of course, you know. Um, as time's gone on but like I said the waters get a little bit muddy when something grows and gets bigger um, but yeah back in the day Resident Evil was it was a great time to be a Resident Evil fan it hadn't blown up so much that everybody knew it outside of its core fan base it was still growing but it, it was still reaching certain heights and getting out into the mainstream consciousness um, but not you know not becoming completely muddy I think when 5 and 6 dropped you know and there was all these side games and stuff I think that's when things started to get a little bit out of control and they've since reined things back in, you know. But yeah, let's hope this film is good. Let's hope the director can actually bring the vision of the first game over and adapt it into film form. Uh, I've waxed lyrical, you know, on Resident Evil for basically most of this video. Um, that's the only sort of news that there is regarding the film. So, you know, it's just his statement really and there's not a lot else. So I thought I'd talk to you guys about the, you know, the, the first game and, and what I want to see from the film. Um, I've been there since day one. I'm not someone that just jumped on when Resident Evil 4 or 5 was released. I've been there since the, the very first PlayStation game was released and I went out and I bought it. I know the Sega Saturn version I think that came out before, but yeah, I've pretty much been there since day one. Fun fact is I actually saw the game being uh, presented on Games Master back in the day when there was actually like TV shows of Games Master. And I saw it and I remember it was the, the, the Black Widow boss fight. That's the huge spider that you face in the first game. And uh, I didn't think much of it, I just, it was very quick, someone was playing it, I used to get kids, you know, playing the games and, and trying to beat them, um, and that's about all I saw of it, and then when I got a PlayStation and it popped up on store shelves, I, I was thinking, well it was actually the director's cut, I missed the, the original version, so got my hands on the director's cut, and I remember thinking, is this the same game that I that I remember from, from Games Master, or is it completely different? It was the same game, and... I knew that when I saw it on Games Master, it drew me in right then and there. So picking up the game was, I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know who Umbrella was. I didn't know why there were zombies in this mansion. I didn't even know there was going to be bioweapons in it, you know, that were like the Hunters or the Chimera or the Tyrant. Um, yeah, and when when the story dropped and stuff, it blew me away. Like, it blew me away. The, the revelations and stuff during the story blew me away. The fact that Wesker was, spoiler alert, for a 
fucking 25 year old game uh, or more actually he's a traitor that just like shocked me you know i wasn't used to the plot twists like that in video games you know so yeah i love the first game i love it for its cheesiness it's still gritty i love just that that nostalgic feeling I get when I pick the game up, I play through it, Cerberus jumps through the window, I remember when I was like 12 and I shit my pants, or 13 and I shit my pants when, when a Cerberus jumped through the window, and and when you first see the Hunter, like when it's running through those doors to get at you and you first see it, all that stuff still has nostalgic feelings for me and I love playing the game every now and then, every, every year I think I pick it up and play it again, so yeah. Do well with this, please. Right, let's make a let's make a decent Resident Evil film, please. And if not, then give up. Honest to God, just give up. Uh, make an anime, and I don't mean the CGI films. I mean an actual anime like Blood: The Last Vampire. Get production IG to produce it to make it. It would be incredible, and I think they do a good job with it because Blood: The Last Vampire was really it was something special, um, and so is like Ghost in the Shell and all the other kind of you know animes that they make and produce. So, yeah. Go the anime route if if this turns out to be shit. But I'm not holding my breath either because this has been go ongoing for, for time. Like Apparently there's supposed to be a series coming out as well. But it's set in the same universe as the films. You can take that and shove it up your ass. No one wants that. But yeah, like this could just all fall through. You know, it is the way with video game films sometimes. Maybe it's for the best sometimes, you know. Who knows? Um, there hasn't been any news on the Metal Gear film from what I've seen. So, like I said, things go... They end up being up in the air and sometimes they don't actually materialize. So I'm not holding my breath and you shouldn't either. But if we start seeing some set photos, it becomes a, an actual thing and they start looking good, then we can get excited. Until then, I reserve judgment. For now, all that's left for me to say is go ahead and smash that like button if you enjoyed the video. If you want to subscribe to my channel, consider doing so because I'll always cover Resident Evil on this channel. It's a series that I love, that I grew up on. Um, and yeah, until next time, I've been John from Guinness Games and once again, I'm signing up. Take it easy.